The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. A world of injustice. In today's headlines, a cry for justice, a long wait for justice. Family gets justice. Justice arrives for all. A justice served. Finally, justice. He is saying now the days of your struggling are over. He is saying now anything from now on that's making you uncomfortable, I'm going to remove it. You don't have to depend on the police. You don't have to depend on Paul Paul no more. You can go to the court of heaven. God is a judge. And people are not your problem. They're just puppets being used by the puppet master. And what you and me going to do is we going to take the puppet master before God. When you go after him, you will spoil his house. Somebody say good news. It'll be good news for everybody. No matter who you are, where you're from, or what your pedigree is, it's going to be good for you. Look what it says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But you are come unto Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to the innumerable company of angels, to, greet, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn. Say firstborn. firstborn. You'll notice that Jesus is no longer called the, un, the only begotten Son of God once you get out of the Gospels. Because after that, he is not the only begotten Son of God. I am also a begotten Son of God. But he is now called the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, underline that, because you just saw the judge up here, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. So notice what we just read, that God is the judge. So now when we're talking about wrong being done, the way that we can cut some things off and the way that we can get a recompense is that we must bring the right party to the heavenly court. <laughs> All right, now let, let's, let's deal with this for just a minute. The kingdom, one man said that the kingdom really hasn't been preached in over 400 years. That's what he said. Now religion's been preached. I'm a Baptist, I'm preaching this. I'm a Methodist, I'm preaching this. I'm, I'm a Church of God in Christ, I'm preaching this. I'm Pentecostal holiness, I'm preaching this. Now let's go overseas. I'm the Anglican church, I'm preaching this. But one of them churches was over those slaves. See, and religion blinds folk because it's all about you coming to a place and doing something and then trying to act nice for a few hours and then going back and do what you do. But the kingdom is in you. And wherever you go, God is there convicting you, compelling you, come on now, guiding you, speaking to you, so now the kingdom must be preached. And Jesus came to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, what is it about? It's not so much about you going to heaven, because if you look at Ephesians chapter 2, he said you are already seated there with him in heavenly places. So it tells me I got heaven made. What I got to do now is work on getting heaven, come on, down to this earth. And heaven is a place of justice. Say amen to that. So you and I are going to be carriers of justice. Now, Jesus said something. E he that is not with me, come on, is against me. 
is against me. So I'm saying religion, look at the religion now that spawned terrorism. That's religion, folks. Come on now. They're saying if you don't belong to that, you're an infidel. Yes, say amen to that. This is what they say. How about another religion? Even KKK. It, it got a cross. They burn a cross, man. Now, now, just hear what I'm saying now, because we're not talking about people. You better hear what I'm saying. We're not talking about people. I'm saying that all of them are walking in darkness. If they don't have the light of the kingdom, and if they are not depending on the kingdom and see God as their source, then the light of the kingdom is not shining in them. The apostle Paul was an extremely religious man, but he was a terrorist. He would come in people's house and they confess Christ as the Lord and Savior and he'd grab them and pull them out of there and hear their children crying, tell mama, mama, don't go. And Paul had no mercy. How about the man who was hauling some of those slaves from those, those coastlines and he came in, but one day something happened to him. He once was blind, but now he could see. And he came up with a song, Amazing Grace, how sweet. Let me tell you, some of us, if you knew what you know now, you wouldn't have did what you did then. Come on now. Say amen to this. So don't be trying to take the the splinter out of somebody else's eye without first taking that stick out of your own. Say amen. No, no, saints. If you get out of love, none of this will work. You've got to stay in love. So it's interesting here. Justice. So now, let's see how that fits into what we're talking about. Let's go to two places. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, and then Isaiah chapter 61. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus was given a book of the prophet Isaiah. Verse 17, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Now notice what he did. He now read out of Isaiah. And he read out of Isaiah chapter 61. Let's go back and see what he read. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste, They shall raise up former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. 
and strangers shall stand and feed their flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God, and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have double. For your confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Come on down to verse 8. For I, the Lord, love judgment. That word judgment translates, guess what? Justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. All right. Jesus came to preach that. So in this, we're talking about vengeance and recompense. Vengeance has nothing to do with hate. It's nothing to do with resentment or some emotional retaliation. Vengeance proceeds from God's love of justice, the necessity of punishing offenders. Recompense. Recompense means to compensate. It means to repay to return an equivalent of anything done or suffered to make amends. Now, I want you to see something. There is a former and latter rain. Jesus ministered mainly under the former. Let's go and look at Luke Chapter 9, please, and starting at verse 53. Luke 9, 53. I just told you vengeance had nothing to do with hate or resentment. Now understand, when Jesus preached, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, to set it limited them, them that are bruised, and the, acceptable, the preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book and sat down. He didn't say anything about vengeance because vengeance was not a part of his ministry. He was under the former reign. But as soon as Jesus left, and the Holy Ghost came. The day of vengeance came upon the enemies of God's people. Lord have mercy. Stay with me. Look at verse 53. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Look at me. Jesus went to preach, went through that village. He was headed to Jerusalem. Now, he had prayed for Jerusalem. He did not pray for that village. He was headed to Jerusalem because now is the time for his passion, that he was going to give his life for all mankind, humanity. So what happened? He's going to Jerusalem, and he came, went to the village, and the disciples were used to people coming out and so forth. Nobody came out. Look at the reaction of the disciples. And when the disciples, James and John, saw that they said, Lord, Will thou that we command fire to come down and from heaven and burn this bunch? I'm just talking, putting my own words now. <laughs> Consume them just like Elias did. But he turned and rebuked them. He said, now you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. Whoa. Whoa. Look how he handled this case Consider, considering somebody that didn't come out to see him, so forth and so on. Look how he told his disciples to handle that. Now, this is Jesus' ministry. But once he left, the Holy Ghost started. Let's look at his ministry. Let's turn to Acts and chapter 13. Now, remember, this is time for God's favor. Now, what is favor? Remember, favor means to support it means to assist. 
It means, now I'm not talking about, hey, you know, you favor your daddy. I'm, I'm not talking about that favor. That's, again, we got the wrong definition. That's not in the Bible. Sh- favor has to do with divine assistance. It has to do with God providing advantages to you above everybody else. Him showing you special privileges. Him featuring you. Him, him, him bringing you into a place of making it easy for you. Him granting you special privileges, providing advantages for you. You are to expect favor everywhere you go. You go into a place, you're supposed to expect favor to come in. Say amen now. So look what it says here, Acts chapter 13. Now, this is when they're going and Paul had joined them because Paul had gotten born again now and so forth. And verse 2, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted and the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work unto I have called them. Let's go to verse 4. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country. Deputy means governor. Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, prudent means got some sense, intelligent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so his name is by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. And he said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now, Jesus would have ignored Elymas. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and thou shalt be blind not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist in the darkness, and he went about seeking somebody, someone to lead him by the hand. Now the deputy, when he saw this was done, he believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Now, wait a minute, I want to see something here. I want to see vengeance taken over. I want you to see the fact that Jesus, gone, seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us, but now the Holy Ghost is here. Now Jesus had made a statement. He said that upon this rock, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the first job of the Holy Ghost in these last days is to execute vengeance upon all the enemies of God's people and nothing will escape them, him. Are you with me here? Now I got to, you got to understand it's not about hatred. It's about judgment. It's about justice. It's about something that God is going to do through you that the set time has come that nothing is going to be able to stop you because the favor of God is working for you and now you cannot any longer be molested. You cannot any longer be assaulted. You can no longer be harassed. You can no longer be tormented. God is going to judge anyone who wants to take you on because he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. God is going to build his church and execute vengeance upon anybody that's trying to stop it and stand in the way. The Holy Ghost is come now. He's going to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And I'm here to tell you right now, 
that God is not intended for you to have to fight your own battles anymore. You're not going to have to get even with anybody. So whatever from now on has been tampering with your destiny in God is going to have to be dealt with. Whatever's been afflicting your body is going to have to be dealt with. Whatever's been humiliating you, whatever's been against your peace and your progress, against your career, your business, your children, everything else is now being put down because God's vengeance is now taken over. Say amen to that. Now, we can't leave off recompense. Look what he says in Hebrews chapter 10. Look at verse 30, if you will. For we know him that has said what? Vengeance, come on, belongeth to me. Who is me? God. And who will recompense? God will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall what? He's going to judge his people. I told you that when the latter rain comes, that's when the vengeance begins. And I'm saying that it begins in the day of vengeance upon all the enemies of God's people. Now, this is going to beautify the church. And I'm saying that everything that has been done to you, heaven has monitored it. Heaven has kept records of every bit of injustice that's been done to his people. No matter what your background, no matter where you come from, everything that has been embezzled from you, extorted from you, stolen from you, defrauded from you, exploited from you, scammed from you, robbed from you, substituted for you, everything that's been resisting you is now going to be restored. Everything is going to be brought back because now is a set time of God's favor among his people. Well, I trust that you were blessed by today's teaching. Now, this series entitled Your Day of Justice, Volume 1, is a teaching I did several years ago. It's a message that's very timely for the condition that we have today. So we're faced with injustices in the world. Now, it's important to know that for justice to be done, we must understand who the culprit really is. Now, I've said this before, but we must understand that because if we don't, especially in the church, we'll end up fighting people. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. A lot of times the media is trying to stir up some things and cause things to come in what? So that there'll be racial tension in our cities and our, in our communities and, you know, in the church and, and so forth. And it doesn't have to be because we should know who's behind this whole thing. You know, I did a little study to try to find out because we're, you know, preaching and headquartered out of Chicago as to what has been the extent of violence and murders and so forth and young, among our young people in Chicago. And it's over 400 for one year. And I'm just saying that's homicide, murders for one year. Now, I know that we had situations where we had recently one person to get um, um, seemingly uh, there went to some, some, some uh, injustice or seemingly some people say, hey, he wasn't armed, he didn't do this, and, and so forth and so on. And I understand that. I'm not, I'm not trying to minimize that. But wait a minute. The, the, the family of that person... Uh, the family that lost these 400 people, they, 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 they still lost somebody. I mean, look at 400, 400. But the other one, see, was, was racial. And I think sometimes what happens in the media pumps that up because a lot of times the media is being stirred up by the enemy, which wants to divide the country so that we'll be weak and not be able to send out the missionaries that we're doing to all the nations of the earth and preaching the gospel and so forth. So a lot of times religion blinds people. Religion just takes people and make them divided. That's why they call it denominations. By its name, it means to divide. And, but the kingdom is what Jesus preached. He didn't preach anything about religion. He didn't say, I've come that you might have religion. He didn't say that. He said, I've come that you might have life. See, he came to stop the devil, to undo everything the devil had done. And he knew the devil was behind it. He told, this is what he said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He knew that the enemy had deceiving, see, people in such 
uh, magnitude that they didn't even know they were destroying the son of the living God. So when you talk about vengeance, it has nothing to do with hate or resentment or some emotional retaliation. The vengeance is something that comes out of God's love. And then his recompense is to mean compensate. So if you've lost something that the devil has stolen from you, God says, I'll bring it back to you and I'll bring it back to you and repay you for your loss. Praise God. Now God can do that. If God said it, he can do it. Praise the Lord. So I'm not trying to minimize anybody's loss, but I'm saying this, there were 400 young men or whoever over 400 that shot each other, homicide, suicide, so forth and so on. Hey, don't forget about that. I'm saying the devil was behind it. Well, this is Bill Winston. Until next time, we love you. Keep walking by faith. Justice. In today's headlines, a cry for justice, a long wait for justice. Family gets justice. Justice arrives for all. A justice served. Finally, justice. He is saying now the days of your struggling are over. He is saying now anything from now on that's making you uncomfortable, I'm going to remove it. You don't have to depend on the police. You don't have to depend on Paul Paul no more. You can go to the court of heaven. God is a judge. And people are not your problem. They're just puppets being used by the puppet master. And what you and me going to do is we going to take the puppet master before God. When you go after him, you will spoil his house. Now is the set time for justice to prevail on God's people who have been oppressed with forces that have sat on their destiny. To order your copy of Your Day of Justice by bank card at 1-800-711-9327 or online at www.billwinston.org. This is the set time to be victorious and win the battle in your day of justice. It's not what people call you, it's what you answer to that's important. And never answer out of your name. You are designed to change your own brain. You are designed to do your own brain surgery. You need to be excellent on your level. Know that God is about to take you somewhere that you will have influence. The Missions and Marketplace Conference is back with your host, Dr. Bill Winston. March 25th through the 27th, 2015 at Living Word Christian Center. Hear from some of the world's most influential business experts and ministry trailblazers. This year's conference will include workshops, networking, business expo, career fair, and much more. Register now at mm.billwinston.org or call 1-866-816-4653. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers.